Hi, I'm Sharon Azrieli. Welcome to my Canadian by Design interview series, in which I have the fabulous honor to interview Canadian architects, designers, and artists, and get to speak to them about what makes them tick, how do they work, and what do they do with their art, and what makes them special. I met uh, Mike Holmes in his offices in Toronto. It was actually a very windy, blustery day. It was actually early fall, and I had just uh, broken my knee. So it was, uh, nobody could believe I even went there, but I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Mike Holmes, what an honor it is to sit down with you at your office here in Toronto. Thank you so much for sitting with us. My pleasure. Yes, you are in my office, so I'm sorry for it being tight, but it is comfortable. Oh, it's fabulous, and we really appreciate it. Thank you for sitting with Home in Canada. Mike Holmes really is what you see is what you get. He really is a larger-than-life character. He's genuine. He's honest. He's fun. He's charming. I had one of the best days of my life, and I hope you enjoy this interview as much as I enjoyed meeting Mike Holmes. Mike Holmes. Oh, I'm so excited. So we'll try and start at the very beginning. Okay. Okay. And, you know, the first thing, I hope it's not too personal, but I want to congratulate you, and I want to, I mean, not just for all of your achievements and for all of everything that you've accomplished, which we're going to get to, but it's an important year because from what I've read, you know, and me too, I had some recently, some close people, too, too young, way too young, pass. And here you are, and you're healthy, thank God. True, true, true. And how do you feel? I feel good. I mean, I've always felt good. Uh, I guess in the, my own mind, I always thought I was Superman. And uh, Look behind you. There yeah, you are. Yeah. Uh, I guess it was just because I work, I work, I work. I'm on a mission. And uh, you don't think about life, I think, until you get around our age now, where, yes, a memory, you know, my dad died a year ago at 55, and my mom died at 56. Unbelievable. Uh, both too young. Way and, too young. And that is an awakening with other things that it's like, okay, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? And should I change things? And uh, that, Truth is, nothing's changed. Uh, I st I'm still going 12 months of the year filming, one show to the next, nonstop, ideas, ideas, uh, what to do next, what is the smarter thing for me and the people around me, my company, to do. Uh, with that, cr I think, creates a drive into direction, and uh, that direction isn't done yet. I'm getting there, but I am thinking about that three months away for winter. That's starting to get on my bucket list. It's impossible not to be a fan of Mike Holmes because he is the genuine article. He speaks his truth. And I think that that's, you know, when you see uh, anybody that is has lasted the test of time in television or on stage, um, it's because they are a genuine article. You can like them or not like them, but they are speaking a truth. And Mike Holmes is a genuine article, and I love him. All, like all great people, develop a lexicon. And so in your lexicon, you have make it right. And I want to know if that comes from your dad's set of values, which I think it does. I think we all have, you know, what we were brought up with. And I, I want to know what's the favorite, what does it really mean, make it right? Simple. Um, when I was young, my dad would always say to me, Mike, if you're going to do something, do it right the first time. So ah, I, do it right the first time. Yeah. So, I mean, I trademarked that along the way also. But ah. it was about you're only as good as your word. It follows you wherever you go. And uh, don't screw people. I mean, he was a good man. He really was a good man. Make it right was quite simple. When we started the idea of the show, which was a complete accident, and it's me giving the network crap. Right, because right, I didn't right, like right. the shows on their right, channel. Right, uh, and giving them an idea was about you know 
let's make it right. And make it right actually stands for everything. It's, it does. If you've done something wrong, make it right. Okay. If you've screwed somebody in some way by accident, whether it's... Even if it's by accident. It doesn't matter. Right. Make it right. No it's, matter what. It's like, it's, okay. hey, how hard is it? It's fabulous. Well, you it, say, it, I'm it, sorry. It, it, okay, to say you're sorry might work, but to make something really right can be hard. I don't think it so. It can be hard. I don't think so. It depends how big the screw up is, right? True. If it's that yeah. big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but everything you can make right. At the beginning of our interview, the thing that I admire so much about Mike and that I agree with him so much is that uh, I think what we, we shared um, and that formed a really big bond between us, that we both come from a family ethic, a work ethic and a value ethic about making it right, you know, and I, I think that's what everybody is drawn to about him, that, you know, you start, you know, we have two, two, two expressions that we share. Number one, make it right. So no matter what you do, it should be always done right. And number two, uh, the other one that I loved was outside in. So uh, in my family, it was work from the foundation up, but it basically means the same thing. So that you, you, uh, you build with a strong foundation, Right. And, and and that means not just in building, but it means of ethics. Right. Truth, um, loyalty, uh, do it right. And I love that. So that that's the foundation upon which everything is built with Mike Holmes. And that's beautiful. So what's your favorite bottom line thing about this business that you're in? When I first started this, it was about, I mean, I've been doing this since I was a kid, but in television, I, I said, this may give me the opportunity to make a difference. And uh, with that difference comes not so much changing building codes, but teaching homeowners what they need to know. Uh, pretty simple. We need to live in a healthy home. We should be living in a home that lasts forever. You know, three little pigs. I always talk about the three little pigs. Uh, the environment is a big thing, and we've been talking about it, we've known about it for years, but we're not building for it. Mm -hmm. We think we are. Seismic, hurricane, tornado, we think we are, but we're not. So going back to the bottom line thing you love about the business, uh, what do you love so much that you could never retire? It's funny because my kids would call me a workaholic, and I never thought I was until probably I realized they're on vacation and I'm not which is probably a bad thing. I realize that about my employees, by the way. Oh, I'm tired of that. I really am. I'm like, you're on vacation again? Yeah. Um, I love creating. I love, like, I love designing. It's, it's just what I do. I build houses. I solve problems. And if you ever seen me stand there with my arms crossed looking, all of a sudden it's a pose. It's not a pose. It was me thinking. Yeah. And it was, how am I going to fix that? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'd come up with it in my head and boom, I'd, I'd solve the problem. So for me, it was about just, I, I, it keeps coming back to make it right. It was, I love to build. I love to rip it apart, put it back together again. Yes, I get frustrated when I rip it apart because I'm like looking at it saying, who the hell did this? Uh, why did they do it this way? And this is how it should be done. And then I do it that way. Right, you know, that's, right, right. So how can I stop that? Why should you? I, one day I will, but I don't think I'll ever completely stop it. Right, right. I, and by the way, I think that's the mark of a great man. I think that people who genuinely, like my father said to me, if you love what you do, it's not work. I hope, my hope would be for my children. My hope would be for anybody watching this video. My advice would be to anybody out there trying to choose a career or a profession, if you can choose something that you love to do, because if you choose what you love somehow to do, even if you have to start at the very bottom of that career and work your way up, it will not feel like work. And if you love what you do, then you will never feel like you're working. And that's what I think that Mike meant about funaholic because when you love what you do then it doesn't feel like work and then you can do it all your life right i think if we do love what we do it's it's not work it's really not it's not that's probably hence workaholic you know, well 
Okay. Can we call it funaholic? Or I, love I, loveaholic. I agree. With and I'd like you to talk to me, please, about uh, passing down the wisdom because your kids are with you in the in your job in your work, but you're doing a lot of uh, philanthropy also, which is a fabulous thing. And I'd like you to talk to me, please, about your foundation and about the world skills. Okay. For the kids, that's pretty simple. In life, you know, I was brought up in a bad neighborhood. We were broke. I didn't know it because Kraft Dinner and Hot Dogs, I thought we were rich. Well, everybody loves Kraft Dinner and Hot Dogs. That's, it doesn't matter I still how do. rich you are. I still do. Every kid wants that. But, I mean, I was brought up in a bad neighborhood, and I knew when I was younger that my kids, funny as a young age, I remember saying it, will never be brought up in this neighborhood. Uh, passing it on to the kids is just about, look it, kids, humans especially, don't learn unless they bang their head. It's called bruising. I, I don't care what anyone says. We don't listen to people. We don't listen to advice because we need to learn from our own mistakes. And one thing about my kids is I realize that they're going to make the mistakes. All I can do is help guide them. Let them make the mistake, help them clean it up, help them fix it, help them solve it. Uh, but passing on everything is that. It's who you are. It's, it's, it's like my dad. Don't lie. Be good. Pay your bills. Pay off your mortgage. You know, if you pay oh, off your mortgage, your equity is big. All simple my things. Right. Simple things. Right. Uh, passing that on to the kids was, uh, I guess, and still is distilled in me. And each and every day I still do that. Mike has a foundation in which he helps young people to study uh, the basics of construction and to enter the trades. And he also uh, went to Africa and helped um, in a time of great need. And uh, I'm really proud of him. And we talk about this in the interview. When it comes to the other things like uh, SOS Children's Villages, it was about yeah. helping kids around the world. Yeah, I want and, to know about that. Well, that was a no-brainer for me. You know, I went to Africa. I shot two commercials that raised millions and millions of dollars which went to the kids. And I did my homework, you know, for them, uh, finding out that 90 cents on the dollar goes to the children. That doesn't happen with any other charity. You can check. Not most, I know. Well, uh, almost none out of all the charities in the world. Yeah. And that was something that uh, was important to me. It was, wasn't easy going to Africa. As a matter of fact, all I did was open my wallet and do whatever I could to help, uh, not just do the commercials, but... I didn't understand that the government didn't care about the kids. I didn't understand that the country isn't the same as Canada. It made me realize how wonderful Canada we, is. It's the best country in the world. Uh, there's no I doubt in my mind. I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. From there, I mean, there was no, you know, why did I start the Homes Foundation? It was for the next generation of skilled trades. Uh, well, I want to talk about that because how do we actually teach the trades? We actually don't. There's a problem with this, That's and there right. always has been. I mean, I went to school when I was younger. I learned all about the trades, even though I was doing it since I was a little boy. Where did you learn? Uh, it, well, from my father. Okay, that's the problem. It's a, What I've noticed is that skilled trades are taught in the families, from usually from father to son. It's passed down. Yeah, but, but we, we need, all have schools. We need to have that. So I call that touching. You know, it's like touching tables for chefs. Uh, which I want to do a show on, but that's another idea, and that's me thinking, you know, television. Okay, that's a, I want to know, every, we heard it here, but go ahead, where, where is there a school? There is schools, there's lots of schools, I work with Skills Canada, I work with World Skills. I'm okay. the ambassador to both, Okay. and that's just about, you know, encouraging the, the next generation to get in the trades, showing the opportunity. Uh, You're talking about schools, not just high school, I'm talking about higher education. In this section, Mike describes how he would like to see the Work Skills Canada teach a higher level of codes so that the contractors coming out will know what should be and not what is actually required. What I mean is school is school. In school, we teach minimum code, which you talked about earlier. Minimum code is the beginning of doing things right. It's only the beginning. We don't teach medium code. We don't teach a maximum code. We don't teach anything but minimum code. And this is a problem, and I'll give you an example. An engineer is taught, especially a structural engineer, they're taught mathematically in school how to load 12 feet across, 
what's the weight load above it, live load, dead load, et cetera. And right. it's simple math. Right. So they don't build, and they odds are most engineers never built, but they're taught math. Right. And that math dictates load span. And a guy like me is going to look at the drawings. I'm going, to I'm going to work with the government. I'm going to work with everyone. And I'll say, okay, I get that. But why don't we do this? Because I'm experienced. I've done this enough to know what works better. And again, it's not minimum code. Another great example. Uh, minimum code is 2 by 8. used to be 2 by 10. Floor joists. We were able to get down to 30 pounds per square foot live load. That means you living Excuse there with furniture. For the, for the interview. Yeah. Your floor. Yeah. 30 <laughs> pounds a square foot live load. Yeah. That means your body can be on it. Mine can be on it. It means the furniture can be on it. Mm -hmm. That's a 12 foot span, a two by eight with two vertical structures. Okay. Simple, right? Outside wall, inside wall. Got it. Soon as we went to a manufactured floor joist, which far exceeds minimum code, Engineers automatically, mathematically changed it to 30 pounds a square foot. So what does that mean? We spanned our floor joists wider apart. We use less wood, but it's still 30 pounds a square foot. So why the hell do it? What should we be doing? This is a great example here. A deck, if it exceeds, let's say, 200 square feet, it must be 100 pounds a square foot. Why? Don't have, I, I'm not going to, I'm on the spot here and I'm bad at math. I'm listening. Because you're going to have your whole family and a party out on the deck yeah, and that's and a I lot of people. And I just saw the issue where the thing fell down and the poor woman's three friends almost died. And I was like, this is exactly why I want to talk to you. So point being is we've opted on the outside because if a deck is big enough, it can hold a crap load of people. And we don't want that deck to fail, whether it's two feet above right. the ground or 20 feet right. above the ground. Right. So it's, it's actually going to be a code of 100 pounds per square foot. Right. But here's the funny part. If everyone's out on the deck and it starts to rain, you got to open the door. And where does everyone go? Inside. To what? <laughs> to 30 pounds a square foot. Correct. Thank God I was listening. <sighs> so does that make sense to you? No. Okay. My point to all of this is minimum code is minimum code. Once we start to learn better, when I teach, I teach why. I don't teach how. It's not about how. How to install a toilet's really simple. But if I teach you why to install it this way, how you're gonna, it's not gonna flood, it's not gonna be a problem. Okay. Don't put the register by the toilet because the little boys keep missing the toilet and putting it in the, <laughs> right? If I teach you why, you won't do that. I'm glad you like that. I have two sons. <laughs> and you know. I was so impressed with Mike Holmes because what he managed to do, for example, with Radon, was he managed to, across the country and Canada, convince uh, various communities that Radon was a threat to our health and convince people to look for Radon. And even if he, he explained to me, so I finally understood, you can't, I guess, convince government to, to raise the codes because I don't know why. I didn't really understand. But at least he managed to convince buyers that they have to look for it. So that helped. I wish that people will now learn how to be more educated buyers. And that's what Mike is trying to do. So about codes, I'm not sure how you change codes. But at least... What Mike is trying to do is teach buyers how to be more educated. How do we, A, change the codes? Where do we manage to change them for? Do we get to change them for just one province at a time? How do we go across Canada and do this? Okay, first of all, we have Canadian codes. We have provincial codes. Uh, and and we have city codes. When you look at it, relatively, even in the United States, it's, it's about the same across the country. Uh, Per region is going to have a couple of different changes. You've, you've got sinking soil out in Alberta in certain areas. So little things have different changes within code. But I, I, I got off subject earlier because we were talking about the Homes Foundation. We we're talking about Skills Canada, World Skills, and school. And with school, we teach just minimum code. And the idea was to actually say, okay, we need to start teaching more, storytelling. I remember my sheet metal teacher when I was a kid he looked like Neil Diamond. I didn't know this till later, right? And if you wanted to get out of class or stop doing work, all you had to do was ask him about Neil Diamond. Boom, he'd turn around, he'd open the cupboard's door, put on his reel-to-reel, -reel, 
and he'd play Neil Diamond music. And I actually became a fan. The point about this, his passion was telling history of Neil Diamond. He loved Neil Diamond. He was a storyteller, a singer. Shouldn't we be doing that in school when it comes to building technology? I think so. I think it's about the passion not just to teach minimum code, but it's to teach them, like I said earlier, why not how. But I don't care across Canada. We're getting severe weather changes. Uh, just because it's heating up doesn't mean it's only going to be hotter. It means that the actual weather patterns are going to become more extreme. More extreme. More tornadoes, more right. storms, higher right. winds, right. more rain, right. more floods. Right. Floods has been everywhere. All right. In this section, Mike describes how he would like to see the Work Skills Canada teach a higher level of codes so that the contractors coming out will know what should be and not what is actually required. Are we teaching in school? that we can do something better than that. And, and, and it's not so much you know teaching medium, medium code or maximum code, but it's teaching a theory. When I teach, I say, okay, here's how mold grows. Why is this happening? So, I, I mean, I can talk about this for hours. I know we've only probably got about two minutes, but I'm playing no, with no, you. We'll, we'll just try. keep going. Yeah. If I taught you how mold grows really quickly. But don't test me again. It really quickly. Mold means two food groups. My father used to say water is a cancer in a house. Actually, water is great. It's great for the body. It's great for cleansing. It's not a cancer when it comes to mold. It, the people think it is. Two food groups for mold to grow, what are they? You just said one of them. Moisture. Right. right? And that's simple. What's the other one? I'm, I'm not following you. Okay. In order to, for mold to grow inside the wall, in the bathroom, in the kitchen, under the cabinet, uh, down in the basement, it, it lives from two things. We eat and drink, just like mold does. Okay. So it drinks water, it needs water to form, right. and then grow. Right. It also needs a second product. And Bacteria. That's, well, no, because it can create its own, but it's actually organic product. Paper, wood, Okay. Organic product. Oh. Now think about this for okay. a minute. We're made of water okay. and we are organic. Right. We need to breathe. Right. right? I wish we'd teach this in school. Oh. What's organic? Paper, drywall, etc. Right. Well, minimum code now. We right. put up a vapor barrier on the inside. Right. We trap the moisture content right. within the wall cavity. Right. Hot meets cold, creates condensation. We gave it the two food groups. We failed the system in minimum code. Oh my goodness. So you just learned that, right? Yeah. Why are we still building that way? Why? Because nobody taught us. Let's look at a cooler for one moment. The cheapest form of foam in the world, or a coffee cup. If you put ice water in a coffee cup and ice water in a glass, the glass will condensate on the outside in seconds. The coffee cup won't. That's called the thermal break. We stop hot from meeting cold, so we bridge the point. We literally gap, stop it, hot from meeting cold, no moisture. First food group, gone. What does that tell you? Build with a thermal break technology. Right. So it's not about, and I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm pushing this into education. The point of teaching these things to kids, they won't forget. You'll never forget that I just told you that. Nope. They won't forget these things. So all of a sudden, they're learning minimum code. They're, they're, they're touching feeling. I want to be a carpenter. I want to be an electrician, a plumber. And they take those little things that are, are taught from passion of understanding. And it can now put that into useful things in building. Like if I said okay, I can build but houses Mike, that won't mold. I got you, but Mike still didn't answer my question. Yes. I'm sorry. Go. How do we get the, the codes changed? Let I, you're it's a brilliant about... teacher. No, no, no. You're a brilliant teacher, but you didn't answer my question. We now know. Let's say that you now said to me, this is wrong way of building. And the code has to be changed. And I'm, I'm agreeing with you. So you've proven it to me right here. And now we change the code. We say this is a better code. It won't happen. No, no, no. I don't accept that. I don't neither. But understand it. The reason why codes are not going to change is you must start with a bare minimum. Code is called minimum code. It's not called code. It's called minimum code. Let's make up a new word. Well, it doesn't work that way. What we need to do is recognize what, what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, and everyone is a builder or homeowners, 
don't do well, that. How did you do it with the radon? Radon was really simple. When I first heard about radon, I thought it was a bunch of mumbo jumbo. I'll be really honest. As a matter of fact, I stood up to the person that was trying to educate me and I sort of gave them a little bit of crap on, on you know, you don't know what you're talking about. Then I, I, I investigated it and I found out it is the number one leading cause of lung cancer yeah. behind smoking. Oh, behind smoking. So smoking is number one. Number two. Oh, after smoking. Right. Gotcha. So really, in theory, for the, all those people that don't smoke, it's the number one leading cause of lung cancer. Man, my imagination opens, opens up. Yeah. I'm like, holy cow. How many people have had lung cancer that never smoked in their lives? Have they ever, anyone, anyone ever checked the Becquerels coming out of the ground where they live? They've lived there for 30 years. Have they ever checked that amount of radon because it comes out of all ground? Terrifying. The question is how much? Terrifying. You live on one side of the street, I live on the other. Your house could have 1,700 Becquerels. I haven't even checked. I, I My haven't. house could have 70. Incredible. And you live across the street. Right. So it will come up inside your home when we don't know it. It's deadly. We can't see what's right. in the air. Right. Never mind dust particles and everything else. And you know, mold. We breathe eighteen thousand spore counts of mold in one cubic meter of airspace every day outside. Bet you didn't know that. Nope. And I'm I'm a crazy germaphobe opera singer. So nobody um, needs to be germaphobe. We just need to put in an air cleaner in our home. That's the, the smartest thing we can all do. Radon became something to me that needed to be att paid attention to. It should be part of the real estate program that whenever you buy a house, you must have a test on every single house. As a matter of fact, I think it is. there is in the United States. There, I think in Quebec too. Actually. Okay, maybe Quebec, but it's not Canada wide. I think we have to sign a form for every home. Why do you think that hasn't happened? Because people want to sell their homes and they don't want to be responsible. And the government doesn't want to stop it because they make money off of each home sale through land transfer taxes, etc. Uh -huh. Taxes, taxes, yeah. taxes. Like... Okay. Okay. But I'm still going to bring you back to this because I Go know ahead. you want to make it right. And by the way, so do I. And that's why I'm doing this it's series. It's teaching. It's teaching, but there's got to be more to it. We have to figure out a way. I'm going to, I love that you're such a great teacher, but let's. Okay, two things. I want to know, is there a program to teach on a higher level? Let's, no. Okay, and that's what I want to do first. Let's create a program to teach on a higher level. That's my show. Trades. Well, yeah. You know what? It would be great to do that, and then there would be an argument. What needs to happen, and I've said this for many, many years. That trade we need, schools. I, I well, mean. it's not so much trade schools. What I said to government, what I've said to everyone in this country and to the world, we need to push and give incentive to all developers to build smarter, healthier, stronger environments. Okay, but that, that's a very capitalist that's, answer. You give them incentive, they'll do it. You don't give them incentive, they're not going to do it. They're going to build the minimum code. It's, it's not, nothing's going to change. Uh, uh, it's a very capitalist answer. I, I hear, your, I hear what you're saying. I, there is no arguing it because no one's going to do it. So with the developers, you work together with a school like World Skills, Skills Canada. You bring the kids in and you develop a, a, a community of the smartest. In, you know what? I would head this every single day of the year. It's, it's what I should be doing. I will head this to build a community that is the greenest in the country, that is the healthiest in the country. We'll take water from the land, clean it, put it back to the land and bring it back again. Never mind pulling it from the lake. We can do this. I've proved this yeah. over and Did over, and we're still that? not Did doing it. Did you see it. that that they made, where they take where there was a, a competition for the Bill Gates thing? I think it was where they took water from the toilet and they recirculated it into clean drinking water. You can. Yeah, it's yeah. been done. We it's had called this taking black water, and making it white That's again. That's right. That's right. I, I loved it because it, they needed an Africa. It right? exists, and, and also they created electricity as a byproduct. Now mindset. Okay, if this was a septic tank right here, you knew what was in the septic tank. And there was a tap on the outside, and you pulled a cup out, and they poured you a glass of water and asked you to drink it. Would you drink it? Well, it depends where I was, right? If I'm in Canada with all of our rivers and lakes and forests, and I'm spoiled rotten, then I might not. But if I'm in Africa, and I, and I have a choice of drinking downriver from where I know they're pooping in the river, then I might. 
What if I proved to you that from that tank it was cleaned and you can drink it? It's right. actually that's, cleaner that's, than the water that's coming my in. Point. That's, that's what we have doing. this technology. That's right. I Nobody's know. doing it. I Nobody's know. using and it because have... there's no demand. Remember when people there buy houses? Demand. No, there's not. There is in Africa and there is in Brazil. There's demand and there is for in water, India. for solar because it's necessary. And much how we like we were brought up, that's how they're brought up. So we follow. We follow our fathers. We follow where we, we are. Look at if you're brought up with guns in your hands, that's what you that's what you learn. Unfortunately. And that's I the agree. world we live in. I agree. But when it comes to building, we all can make this change if somebody says, Hey, I got a great idea, which I've said over and over. I got a great idea. Why don't we try this? Absolutely. But it's gonna take not just one person. One person's got the idea. I've got the idea. It's gonna take people that want this. Absolutely. The time is coming. The You're time is here. Time. We're, we're sort of past it, but it's never too late. No, I think we're right. We're at the time. We're absolutely at we're We're getting way past all the things that you want to really talk about, and I apologize. No, no, no. This is perfect. This is fabulous. I still think we need to create a school program, uh, a, 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 not just a high school program. I think we need to create a trade school for for people because, as you said, I think you've said this. I'm only telling you your words. Oh, I've said that. it that there's no, like a CJEP or a, a, a higher school program for people, because as, as you have said, I think I'm saying it back to you, everybody wants to do computers, everybody wants to do work that doesn't get your hands dirty, and we need good contractors, and we need good people to, to do the trades. We didn't have enough trades 20 years ago. That's right, and, and now and we don't have now any. Now we have even less. That's right. Uh, I love that the government has done all the infrastructure, putting the money into, I think it's what saved the country economically. Uh, that's why every street, every highway, every bridge is under construction. Because otherwise it would all be falling off of them. Right. And that's happening around the world. Right. So, you know, there's pros and cons to everything we do. That's a great pro. And I think that we're moving in the right direction. A school for building, teaching to build smarter, better would be brilliant. It's trying to Where tell everyone. Right now, I would I I would put my all my money on BC being the first to do this. Really? Uh, because they tend to be the greenest. Uh, they tend to be the forward-thinking province of this country that they want to do it first. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I don't really like, like. I don't care if it's St. John's. You know, like yeah. let's just do it. It's yeah. it's not hard. Here's here's the problem though. If we have a school that we teach to build the way I'm talking about, well, all of a sudden, these workers then get a job working in minimum code. Everyone's going to bang heads because that's not what I was taught. No, but that's how we change the world. Those people come out of that school and they're going to be, no, sorry, this isn't the way it should if be. If we do it together, the code. government, developers, right. students, right. build. Right. If we do that. That's right. And I think that brings me to my next question. Okay which is your next you know, catchphrase that I love, drill down. Drill down. Drill down. And I think that's what that means, because we got to drill down. So when I, if I understand you, am I, am I right? Drilling down means you start with that and you drill down, because that's what we got to do. Uh, we have to do this. We really do. I, I showed in New Orleans... What's funny, they only wanted me to build to a Category 3 hurricane. I said, I'm here. We're going to build to a Category 5. And we did. We proved the theory. Uh, it was tested over and over again. It was, you know, what it blew everyone's mind away. Why? Because I glued the house together. I bolted it together. I used wood that didn't mold. It barely burned. I used all the simple ideas and married them together. All we got to do is do that somewhere and do it once, do it again, teach as we go, as we go, because you can't just convince the developer to do it. You can't just convince the government to do it in one area. It has to be a group effort. And if we do this one after another, we're going to keep doing, we're going to do it better. But here's the biggest problem of all, okay. especially in this country, never mind every other country that watches my show and the shows around the world. We will never make these changes fast enough simply because the people out there keep buying the minimum code house. They don't stop. They're bidding on them left, right, and center. The developers are, can't build them fast enough for the people. They're causing problems because they're building them so fast. They're falling apart. They're molding. There's big issues. 
It's, it's, it's caused nothing but in my world, the stories that I get every day. Okay. From new homes. Yeah. So as long as the average person keeps doing this, we're not going to change anything. We're just going to sit and talk on camera all about this over and over again. Yeah. In our interview, uh, we talk about uh, the stigma of uh, trade workers. And, um, you know, it's a funny thing because um, I think that the stigma of being a trade worker probably comes from the 1950s uh, when uh, everybody thought that uh, their children should go and be doctors and lawyers and uh, Indian chiefs. I don't know. And uh, now we're finding that we really need these people and there should not be um, a stigma. And uh, um, Mike talks about this. So speaking of stigma, you know, it's funny all my life. I'm, I could tell you so many stories about being a contractor. Uh, I, I, and he was a builder, right? The stigma of a contractor, especially when I was younger, was you might as well be a garbage man. Terrible. You know, the garbage man worked for the city. They made good money. You know, so someone's got to pick up garbage. Truth is, as a contractor, you go to school, you you get certifications. I mean, look, at I can design and build the house the doctor lives in. I can design and build the hospital that he saves people's lives in, but he's a doctor. He gets way more respect than I do. Shouldn't I get the respect too? Opportunity, I make more money than most doctors. Interesting, right? So as a qualified, really good contractor, you can make a very good living without ripping people off, doing things the right way, caring about what you're doing. You can make a good living. Why the hell wouldn't you want to get into the trades? Nova Scotia did something that was brilliant. What happened was they found so many kids, and this is working with Skills Canada, that's why I'm part of it. They found so many kids dropping out of school. They developed the program to the kids that dropped out of school. It was called uh, Options and Opportunities. And it gave them an option and an opportunity to get into the trades. Yeah, they had to take a little bit of math with it. But all they had to do was work in carpentry, electrical, plumbing, mm -hmm. and have a new opportunity to go somewhere. Fabulous. And it went through the roof. Every college was full because of this. Little things that we can do throughout the country that make the difference, especially when it comes to the next generation getting into the trades, we need to do. Absolutely. I don't want to hear the government talk about taxes anymore. I don't want to hear them talk about... I really don't. Right. Because I'm tired of it. I, I want to hear them. Infrastructure, that was wonderful. I'll pat everyone on the back. Moving in a direction that makes sense for the country and the next generation, I'll back every single freaking day. That's just that simple. In this section, uh, Mike and I talk about his new uh, shows and how... Uh, uh, he has brought his kids along with him into the shows and uh, um, how they followed along uh, as he did from his father. And uh, it's really wonderful and heartwarming um, how he talks about his kids and, uh, you know, the foundation of a, a family business similar to the foundation of a home. Um, it's, 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 it's wonderful. Yes, exciting. Um, actually, there's a couple channels. So... Homes 911 is airing right now, which is, again, my family helping other families, and, and I love it. I think people are going to keep airing it. It's on CTV Life Channel. CTV Life Channel. Then you're going to see the show that I shot with my kids. It was about putting them in the limelight. I challenged them to help people. I made them do it, and that's Homes Next Generation. You're oh. going to see that on CTV Life Channel. Sorry, Homes Next Generation. Next Generation. Okay. My kids. So the big one, which will be on the main channel, CTV, is Homes Family Rescue. Right now, that's a running name. Okay. That name could change. Okay. But it, it's, it says what it is. It's my family. You know what? This, this show is exciting because what we've done is we've asked the country to nominate someone, something, somehow. Someone, something, somehow. somehow. Why should I make it right? So we have a school that we're going to be helping because there was a, a young gentleman in the school that uh, sponsored the school because he said his life was down. He hated the school. He didn't want to be there. The one teacher got him to pay attention. He had passion. Made him feel good about it. He started to like it, passed it. Now he wants to go back and help make a new classroom. Well, guess who's going to help him? Oh, that's wonderful. 
that's going to be Holmes Family Rescue. And you're going to see a lot of different stories like that. That will air in July of next year. Everyone's excited about it. They are, and we are. And that will be what you're going to be on the cover of this issue, which comes out in May. Okay. So that will be perfect. Okay. That's going to be great. Timing's everything. Yes. Perfect. So what would be something that you would like to say about that show for this issue? Because I'll feature that in this issue. You know, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm excited that my son, son and daughter get to play a really big part of this because I want them to be them. I don't want them to try and be me. And I think that's who they are. Uh, they don't try to be mean. Like, no. if, if you really pay attention no, I, to Sherry, I, yeah. she's a little firecracker. She really is. But she's the sweetest girl. She, she is. My oldest daughter, no one sees her. She's the uh, senior vice president of my company. Uh, my son, everyone sees. You know, he got married on television. Uh, Sherry just had a baby on television, which you'll see in the show. But this puts them in the limelight in this bigger version, the bigger production to making, making it right across the country. We're not just going to do it, Ontario. We're going to move again. And, and I'm, I'm excited about the new opportunities. The, the, I love the idea that there's a sponsor. So we get the highlight on the sponsor. I don't want to say too many things that people shouldn't know. You'll have to watch the show to figure that out, what we do for them, never mind the organization they recommend. So if I could if I can understand this a little bit, what I think is the difference here is that before you were concentrating, let's say, on one family, one home. And now here you're branching out, you're making it bigger to a community. Yes. So if I, I'm going to say something terrible, but you're, it's not terrible, but it's like a village. You're making it more about life as a village sort of a thing. Well, you talked about it earlier. You know, we need to do, build a community. Yes. So work with the community. Yes. It brings in the yes. people to help us yes. help this, this right. the community. That's it. So it's all of a sudden we're putting That's together something bigger, right. better. Now, when you have to do this, are you involving the local authorities so that if codes, I'm sorry to be a, a nudnik, we would call it, but I'm a little bit like you. I When I get a bone, I'm going to gnaw on it until it makes it right. Oh, where did I hear that phrase? I did. <laughs> Someone owns Somebody, that. Somebody, yeah. I'm so sorry, but I'm right here with you, so I'm yeah, asking enough. your permission. Fair enough. Imagine if I got five bucks for every time someone ah, said that. Such a good it's phrase. It's not about the money. So if you have a code that you want to make right, and it's in that community, how hard is it for you to get, could you get laws changed? Oh, no, no. About? Remember, it's not about changing the laws. Wherever I go, doesn't matter. Whether it was New Orleans, doesn't matter. I did it, and I did it in Pasadena, which was but in L.A. Not? What matters is I bring in what I know. I work with the community. I teach everyone. I bring in the inspectors. And I put in all that wonderful thinking where the government goes, we love that. The inspector goes, that's awesome. And the engineers stamp it. Right. And then pass it into law. It's not going to change code. Why not? Because we need to change code. Code is going to be minimum code. It's up to us. Home, you did your own renovations, it's up to you. It's up to me as what I do every day. I will make the difference every day. It's up to developers to do the same thing. It's up to schools to try and teach this. I was just it's not going to happen. I was just having a conversation with somebody the other day, and I was trying to explain to him. He said, why don't we buy land and build on it? And I said, I don't like to do that. I'd rather take existing homes and fix them and make them better. I don't want to just buy land and build new. Well, if we buy land and build better, wouldn't that be smarter? I don't even like it. I actually prefer to fix what's wrong. If we created a program that said all old houses, yours, all houses that need to be fixed should be fixed better, but we Properly. buy land, yes, Properly. with with healthier ideas, right. uh, with healthier building products. Why, why I have homes approved products. Because then I don't just make money on that. It's because they're the best products on the market, and I show you why. Why, not how. Why, and that's the I important like that, thing. By the way. Yeah. Healthy homes need to be paid attention to. If I told you that eighty percent of all the homes across Canada have poor indoor air quality, are responsible or part responsible for the rise in asthma, bronchitis, oh, 100%, allergies. Hundred percent. Tell me more about, do you want to talk a bit about 911 or do you want to talk more about Homes Next Generation or Family Rescue? 
Well, I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of my kids for Home's Next Generation. I really am. I think they did such a great job. By the time we finished shooting the season, no one in Canada has seen it yet. Uh, by the time we finished shooting it, I, I saw a difference in Michael and Sherry. And you'd have to know my world, brother and sister working together. I'm not sure the, I understand. Well, oh. don't worry. I, I understand. <laughs> I, I'll teach you. Brother and sister working together caused so much of it. Isn't that funny that the watch does that? Just at that moment. I didn't even touch anything. <laughs> Brother and sister working together, uh, they really got into a hard time. They, 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 they got into fights. And it, it was hard on me because I'm like, guys, 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 guys. So they needed you more. Well, no, because it caused, it caused the problem. But this new show, the opportunity, what it did was my son and daughter were responsible for helping these homeowners in trouble. Oh, it so, put them in the oh. position that they had to work together to make it right for these families. Oh. And by the end of the season, I was so proud that they loved each other again, oh. that they actually cared about each other and, and said, I'm sorry. Oh, isn't that wonderful? It went from hell yeah. to heaven. Because it took them out of themselves. It really did. And and that yeah. was something that yeah. made the difference for me yeah. in that show. Isn't that Isn't it funny, all these shows I do? Yeah. Why, why didn't I just, like, just keep Homes on Homes? Why did I ever change that? Why didn't I just keep doing it and just do it differently? But it's called the same show, same name. That's no, it's got to be Homes 911. Homes, oh, homes in New Orleans. Well, people want to have some var var variety. Of I whatever. suppose. Um, okay, last thing that you t I talk about a lexicon, right, that, that you do. Outside in, build from the outside in. My father used to say that you have to have a strong foundation, right? Like a family. Right? Well, isn't that the same? Build from the outside in. What's the difference? Why I keep saying build from the outside in is because I'm sick and tired of homeowners going into a house. They didn't even pay attention to the roof. They're not really looking at anything. They didn't get a really good inspection from someone who can give them the advice they so desperately needed. The house needs a new kitchen. We go in, oh, honey, let's put, put in a new, new kitchen. Counter. Right. right. So they spend, what, right. 50 grand minimum Ridiculous. to do a new kitchen, right. another 20 grand to do a new bathroom, and all of a sudden it leaks from the outside right. like crazy. It's right. full of mold, and everything they did had to come down. I gotcha. Start from the outside and work but your way But shouldn't in. you start from the b bottom up? If you're going to renovate the home, the answer would be yes. But starting from the outside in is keeping it weather tight. Water, snow, wind, etc. As long as we can keep that out, then you can start working on the inside. But start on the outside. So work from the outside in. in. I get you, but I still think foundation. I don't know. Same okay. crap, different pile. <laughs> Seriously. Foundation up, outside in. Same, but I love that. I okay. do. Because right. it is about, if the foundation's good, you're yeah, good. Right. Okay. And okay, you said I could come back to you. Are you happy that it turned out this way? My life? Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. If, if you had told me that wherever I went, everyone would know who I was, I, 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 it wouldn't stop me from doing what I did, you know, because when people stop me, they're like, Mike, can I shake your hand? You know, please. Don't. Or can I they, sell they, you my house? They, or yeah. No, no. They want me to come <laughs> fix their house, not sell me. They were like, can you come fix my basement? But it's, it's, I'm their friend. I'm not Brad Pitt. I'm not, you know, I'm not an, and I'm not an actor. So I'm, 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 I'm people just want to thank me. They, and they keep telling me, don't stop. Whatever you do, don't stop. Don't, because I want to stop. I'm, I'm getting tired of but this. But you just said you don't want to stop. I want to stop because it's frustrating me. It's what's frustrating me is that things really aren't changing. Am I seeing the next generation get into the trades? Yes. Am I proud of that? Yes. Is you know, is my family any part to do with that? I sure hope so. That makes me feel even better. Yeah, right. But it's not really changing. You know, 18 years on television, and that's a long time. I said I'll give you two years at the beginning. 18 years I've been filming, 16, over 16 on television. Wow. Am I seeing enough of a change? No, man. I'm still, I still get a, a million emails a year from people in trouble. Mike feels very, very strongly about consequences for bad contractors and bad work. The same way that any um, 
dishonesty and uh, uh, breach of contract would be uh, punishable. And um, he's absolutely right. It's not stopping. I'm not seeing contractors go to jail for screwing a, a family. That's a very good point. There's no consequences. That's right. And as long as there's no consequences, right. it's allowed. Right. Bad contractors should be held responsible for breach of contract or damage the same way that anybody should if they do something wrong and, and, and damage property and leave in the middle of a job. And unfortunately, you know, what happens is that people, they don't know enough about the work that's going on. They think it's some kind of magic and they're so, or mystery. There's some kind of a mystery about contracting work and it's really not and the beauty of the work that Mike Holmes does is that he demystifies it and that's why the shows are so popular they he totally takes the mystery out and he explains things in a marvelously comprehensible way and that's why these shows have have so much popularity and have taken off right because it's like boom 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 here I'm going to explain to you Underneath your sink is not a dark, magical world. Underneath your sink is just a pipe and a valve. And here, you can do it too, Punchinello, funny fellow. It's really not, it's really not a, a fairy world. It's just, you know, underneath your sink, it's a pipe. And so somebody like him, affable, gregarious, charming, and, you know, strong and 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 with great ethics you know you know can explain to all of us in these easy steps what should be done and absolutely so should any contractor and you should have a contract with a contractor and they should live up to their contract and if they don't then they should be held accountable 100 percent to the law why, and I don't like it. Why aren't they going to jail? Why isn't there? Because law? the law protects them. And it's not because it was designed to protect them, because much like minimum code, we failed creating it. The system, there's nothing that says, you know why? Here it is. Contractor accidentally screws a homeowner. On purpose screws a homeowner. It must be proven in court, which means they got to hire a lawyer, he's got to hire a lawyer, and a judge gets to decide. Unless you are fraudulently taking the homeowner's money, you will go to jail. That's, that be, that's the new, that's fraud, right? But building practices, there's no consequences. There's no building police in any which way. And I'm saying there doesn't need to be building police. What needs to be done is they should be able to be arrested if quickly proven they've taken the money. One example, you get $100,000 from a homeowner, you went in and ripped apart a bathroom. You haven't gone back for six months, but you got $100,000 for ripping apart a bathroom. Does that sound okay? It's extravagant, it's 100,000. I don't sure, care if it's I'm a basement. Sure you have cases where it happens. I've seen, it, it takes two days to rip a place apart. Sure, the contractors love demolition. It yeah. takes two days to rip a place apart. Demolition is the easy And if part. they don't come back and they took $100,000, what do you call that? <laughs> I call that theft. Absolutely. That's what I call 100%. That. I steal a pack of gum, I can go to jail yeah. stealing a dollar pack of gum. Give me a break. Terrible. Seriously? Terrible. Okay, so there's my passion. There's there's uh, the things that I believe I'm that need to be changed. I, I'm, I'm, you're preaching to the choir. But it's not going to happen. <laughs> Just like minimum code changes aren't going to happen. Do you know what what changes minimum code, by the way? Tell me. Disaster. Death. That's what changes minimum code. Fires, floods, uh, someone dying. That's what changes minimum code. And those changes are so minuscule. Because what they're trying to do is in better for people living in the home. Great. That's fantastic. But that doesn't make the difference in building smarter, stronger, to last for life. Houses built 2,000 years ago in Rome are still standing. 
you got anything in Canada that's 2,000 years old? How about 200 years old? Almost nothing 200 years old. Mine is 165, but... And I you had to redo it. Totally. But if I build it, it's going to last a lifetime. Well, mine will now. Mm -hmm. Yours will Let's now. Come and see I like it. that. Okay. I like that. Wow. Answer. Are you happy at how it turned out? Yeah. See, I got off track. That happens when you ask me a question. I apologize. That's fine. I, you That's know, okay. I am happy. I am. Um, I, I think I have the opportunity still to make a difference. I think I have the opportunity still to make changes. And I don't think I'm done yet. Um, I always said years ago I'd buy an island and disappear. Well, you got your boat. But the boat is serenity. That's the boat is getting on the water. It's amazing what that I does. I love it, yeah. You just sit on the, I'll yeah. drive out to the middle of Lake Ontario, yeah. turn off the engines. Yeah. It's a huge lake. Wow. Yeah. Talk about that. Like it's it's God's country. It's yeah. I, I I can't explain what that does for me. Oh, I, I'm a I'm a boater too. I know. Yeah. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. We know the movie you that comes I was from. asking you if you had ever built a boat. No, I did not. But if I did, it would be like Noah's Ark. Yeah, it's a good idea. And what's the theory of Noah's Ark? Save all the animals. Well, save life. That's a good theory. I, I so, think it's not a bad theory. So are you happy that it all turned out this way? Sure. I mean, it, it creates opportunity for my kids. It creates opportunity for the young, the next generation. You know, like you heard me say it, women getting into the trades. I'm excited. I'm meeting female electricians that love their job. Female plumbers. No one likes to plumb. Because why? You got to put <laughs> like your hand in the dentist. toilet. <laughs> yeah, it's, you got to put it in someone's mouth. That's, <laughs> But they love it. And that is everything to me because loving what you do, you said it earlier, it's not, not work. work. It's love. And my very last question, is there something that you would like to do, some project that you would like to do, some build that you would like to do be before you call it quits? I want to build the greenest, strongest, smartest community somewhere in this country that everyone's gonna pay attention to. Mm. And I guarantee it'll be the same price as the piece of crap across the street that you might buy. I wouldn't buy it, don't put that Not on Not you, I mean you. <laughs> that, that some, that some Schmendrick would buy. Right, that, that <laughs> people that don't know the difference. It's like, and I want to bring in every school. I wanna be like, I sent this, this is what I wanna do. When I do this, I'm done. I don't think you'll ever be done. Maybe not. But. But I'm trying. It's okay. Don't. I'm trying. No, we need you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. I took home from my interview with Mike Holmes that he's a totally lovely guy. And he deserves all of his fame. And um, he, he has performed a terrific service for most of us by demystifying and explaining to us exactly, you know, what's going on in our houses. And if he can further that and bring to us, for example, schools for the trades and um, create maybe programs and get more people, get more young people to go into schools for the trades, then that will really help all of us going into um, contracting um, for generations to come. And that would be wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me at my home in Canada for At Home in Canada. For more wonderful videos with such illustrious designers and architects like Frank Gehry, Moshe Safdi, and Tiffany Pratt, please look at my website which is at homeincanada.ca. Thank you and see you next time.